This video is brought to you by MyWayTeaching.com. In this part, uh, we are going to start a new chapter. The name of the chapter is Electric Charges and Fields. So here we are going to study about uh, electric charges and uh, electric fields. Okay. And uh, in this part, uh, we are going to study about uh, you know, many concepts uh, starting from the introduction. We study about uh, unification of charges, uh, this uh, electric uh, charges and uh, the electric field and its effects. Uh, all those things uh, we are going to study in this particular chapter. Okay, so let us uh, begin the chapter with the first part that is introductory part. See, all of us have the experience of seeing a spark or hearing a crackle when we take off uh, synthetic clothes or sweater, isn't it? Particularly in case of dry weather, we hear that crackle. This is almost uh, inevitable with ladies' garments like a polyester sari. Have you ever tried to find any explanation for this? Why that happens? Why that crackle? And even we can say one more simple example of electric discharge in the lightning that we see in the sky during thunderstorms. That is one of the natural phenomenon, isn't it? Why that electric uh, lightning appears in the sky during thunders? What's the reason behind that? That is also one question, isn't it? And we also experience a sensation of an electric shock either while opening the door of a car or holding the iron bar of a bus after sliding from a seat. We we'll experience that uh, sudden shock from that, isn't it? The reason for all of these various uh, examples that we just saw is discharge of electric charges through a body okay a body discharges electric charges the reason is also this only discharge of electric charges through a body Okay, which were accumulated due to rubbing of insulating surfaces. And you might have also heard that this is due to generation of static electricity. So, this is the topic that we are going to uh, study in the coming chapter. Static means anything that does not move or anything which does not change with respect to time. Isn't it? So, this electrostatics deals with the study of forces, fields and potentials arising from static charges. Okay, electrostatics it deals with the study of forces, fields and potential of static charges. Okay, now I said discharge of electric charge takes place in our body. That is the reason for all those phenomena. Then what is this electric charge basically? Yes, what is this electric charge that we are going to study here? Electric charge. Historically, the credit of uh, discovery of the fact that amber rubbed with wool or a silk cloth, it attracts the light objects goes through tails of millitus grease around 600 BC it was happened. So the name electricity is coined from the Greek word that word is electron which means amber. Okay. 
Many such pairs of materials were known, which on rubbing could attract light objects like a straw, pitch balls, or bits of paper. Many other examples are when they rub those two items, it will start attracting that light objects. You can just uh, perform this experiment in your home to see such an effect. Cut out long, thin strips of white paper and lightly iron them. Take uh, them near a TV screen or a computer monitor. Then you can see the strips. Those strips will be there, were white strips. They will get attracted to the screen of a TV or a monitor. In fact, they remain stuck on the screen for a while. It was also observed that if we rub two glass rods or if two glass rods are rubbed with wool or silk cloth are brought close to each other, then they ripple each other. You can see in the figure A the two strands of wool or two pieces of silk cloth with which the rods were rubbed with pieces of silk thread you can see these rods are rubbed so after rubbing when we bring these two rods they ripple each other however the glass rod and wool this glass rod and the wool which is used to rub it they are attracted each other Similarly, two plastic rods, you can see in this second figure, when we take two plastic rods rubbed with the cat's fur, okay, they but attracted the fur. Again, in this case also, they attract the fur which is used for rubbing, but these plastic rods, they ripple each other. You can see the third figure here we have taken one plastic rod and one glass rod. Isn't it? In this example, this plastic rod attracts the glass rod and it will repel the silk or wool with which the glass rod is rubbed. Okay? It will repel that silk. The glass rod repels the fur. Here they were given the respective charges. Here both will be negative, so it will ripple. Both will be positive, it will ripple. Here both one is positive and one is negative, so they both attract. Okay. See if a plastic rod rubbed with fur is made to touch two small pitch balls. They have taken a plastic rod. Okay, okay, it is uh, rubbed with uh, fur. Okay, it is rubbed with the fur. After that, it is taken uh, near the two small pitch balls. We can use polystyrene balls, which are suspended by silk or nylon thread, like this. Okay, as you can see that in the figure D, here you can see that the two. balls, pitch balls. Then the balls ripple each other. As I told you, both are of negative charges. They not only these two pitch balls ripple, they also they will get rippled by this rod also, plastic rod also. A similar effect is found if the pitch balls are touched with a glass rod which is rubbed with silk. Here we have taken a plastic rod. In this case, here in this uh, second case, here we have taken a glass rod. Okay. Here it was plastic rod. So when we rub this uh, glass rod with a silk or a fur, 
and when we take it near two pitch balls again the same thing happens these two pitch balls they ripple each other they also get rippled by this rod okay a dramatic observation is that a pitch ball touched with glass rod a pitch ball is touched with a glass rod it attracts another pitch ball touched with plastic rod so here one side we have taken a pitch ball which is which is touched to a glass rod and here we have taken another pitch ball which is touched to a plastic rod okay in this particular case these two pitch balls will attract each other they will not ripple each other instead they will attract each other here it is a mixture of both glass rod and plastic rod here we have taken both in the first case, we have taken only plastic rod. Here, only glass rod. Here, we have taken plastic rod and glass rod, and these pitch balls are attached to each one of it. Okay. See, these seemingly simple facts were established from years of efforts and careful experiments and their analysis. It was concluded after many careful studies by different scientists that there were only two kinds of an entity which is called the electric charge. Only two kinds of entity. We say that the bodies like glass, plastic rod, silk, fur and pitch poles are electrified. They acquire an electric charge when we rub them. So the experiments on pitch ball suggested that there are two kinds of electrification. That is, uh, after that pitch ball experiment, we found those two results. That is, light charges ripple. If both are positives, they will ripple. If both are negative, they will ripple. And the second one is unlike charges attract. If one positive, one negative, then they both attract. The experiments also demonstrated that the charges are transferred from the rods to the pitch balls on contact. So when we you know, contact the pitch balls to the rod, the charges from the rod, they will get transferred to the pitch balls. Okay. And even it is said that the pitch balls are electrified or they get charged when they get con come in contact with that rod. The property which uh, differentiates the two kinds of charges we call it as polarity of charge. Okay. The property which differentiates the two kinds of charges we call it as that is like charges and unlike charges or we call it as polar positive and negative polarity of charges. See, when a glass rod is rubbed with silk, the rod acquires one kind of charge and the silk acquires the second kind of charge. This is true for any pair of objects that are rubbed to be electrified. Now, if the electrified glass rod is brought in contact with silk with which it was rubbed, they no longer attract each other. They do not attract nor ripple. After when we rub the glass rod with the silk, they do not attract and they do not ripple other light objects as they did on being electrified. So the charges acquired after rubbing are lost when the charged bodies are brought in contact. What this says, the charges are lost when they brought in contact. It just tells us that unlike charges acquired by the objects 
neutralize or nullify each other's effect. So when we brought those two in contact, the rod and the silk, the they nullify each other's uh, charges. So they neither attract nor repel. So the therefore we name the charges as uh, positive and negative. It was named by the American scientist Benjamin Franklin. So we know that when we add a positive number to a negative number of the same magnitude, the sum is zero, isn't it? If you add positive number that is plus four to the same magnitude of negative number, the sum will be zero. This might be the philosophy in naming the charges as positive and negative. So when we brought glass rod and the, the silk in contact, this is what happens. They nullify each other's charges and it will become zero. The charge on glass rod or cat's fur is called positive and that on plastic rod or silk is termed as negative. If an object possesses an electric charge, it is said to be electrified or charged. When it has no charge, it is said to be neutral. When it possesses some electric charge, then we say that it is electrified. When it is not possessing any electric charge, then we say it is completely neutral. Okay.